All right, you guys. So this was a video that actually wasn't sent into me by my Discord, but it was sent to me on Discord. <laughs> uh, so Megan, the creator of the video, actually sent this to me, and she was like, hey, I think you would think this is interesting. She was like, I'm not saying that you need to watch it on stream or anything like that, but you guys know how I do. I like to react to things. It's more fun that way. Uh, so we are going to be reacting to Megan's video, uh, which is titled, My 115-pound weight loss plus why fitness influencers kind of suck. Uh, so I don't maybe she's talking about me, um, but I'm really excited if you guys aren't familiar with Megan I uh, reacted to a video a long time ago or long long time ago of internet age uh, But a few months ago uh, where she was talking about uh, health at every size and stuff and this is cool Okay, I, I, I just real quick want to shout Megan out from th that video. She had I think under 50 subscribers Okay Now she is at over 10,000 subscribers over 10 thousand subscribers that is absolutely insane insane okay um so we're going to uh we're going to watch this video together and i'm kind of curious to see uh what she has to say i would be lying if i said i didn't already film this video and then i put it into my computer and the whole thing was out of focus but what i'm saying is really important so i'm refilming it because i'm trying to be better i've uh, been there before but normally I would just be like, oh, I'll just upload it anyways. It's fine. <laughs> Hello, everybody. If you are new here, welcome. Thank you for finding me. And if you are coming back, thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. I know I can be a lot to handle sometimes. True. <laughs> um, so I'm back in my little newly spoopified corner, still with glasses because I like being able to see. I'm still trying to rectify the whole lighting situation. This is a tangent off of my fat acceptance video. It's the flip side of that video. And it's about why I feel that the fitness and health community on social media is also kind of bad and also kind of sucks. I am very scared to film this video uh, and post it. Uh, more so scared to post it uh, than my fat acceptance one because there are a lot of very large... Megan uh, decided to... She was like, you know what? I haven't upset enough people in my first video. So what I need to do is make a second one and upset the other group of people. <laughs> hey, we love to see it. You know, we love to see it. Large and aggressive and quite frankly, intimidating egos and personalities in this community. And I know if people see this and they don't agree with it, they're gonna let me know. <laughs> Which, I mean, I'm opening up this conversation, so that should happen, but it's still just a little daunting. But it is a very important topic to, co to talk about, and I think I should still do it anyway, so here we are. Um, I have been in and out of this community since before I even started losing weight, uh, to before surgery and to after surgery and so on and so forth. And so I've really kind of experienced it from both sides, uh, and on both sides it affected me two very different ways. But I'll Before we get into the actual video too much, I just want to say I appreciate the, uh, the Tom Nook, or not Tom Nook, geez, um, KK Slider and Isabel in the background. Okay, sorry. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, the real tea about this video is that I was going to film a different one today, and then the whole gym shark thing happened. <laughs> oh gosh. And I'm sure a lot of you already know what happened, but if you do not, I have a script again, so if you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking at. If you don't know what happened, uh, gym shark posted a photo of an influencer named uh, Nellie London, and she is in the body positivity eating disorder recovery sphere i'm gonna uh skip through this a little bit because you guys already know all this stuff photo and then the people in their money but i digress when i saw what happened with this post okay, both cool. on instagram with the actual post and with commentary on it afterwards it really solidified why i think that this particular realm of social media can be really bad. I agree. Now let's see why. <laughs> um, and more importantly, and more prevalently, 
uh, hypocritical. My big thing with this whole Gymshark thing was, or is, if you are going to preach a life of health and fitness and wellness, you should preach it and accept it and celebrate it at all stages and all forms. Oh, I mean, I, I had a feeling I would, I would agree with Megan because we've, we've had conversations and we seem very similar, but, and I know that Megan is here in the chat. Hi, Megan. It's very good to have you here, but, um, I need to finish this video. (laughs) Um, I, I had a feeling that I would agree with a lot of what she said. And that, that was one of my biggest, uh, that was one of my biggest gripes with the whole Gymshark thing, right? It was like people were sitting here, a lot of the people that were like, oh, like it's really important to work on your health and fitness and like the people that are mad at like fat acceptance or people that are, um, you know, 50 pounds overweight that are, you know, that are happy about being that size are the same people that when they saw a post from, you know, Nelly London or whatever, someone that doesn't look super shredded, they're like, oh, this shit doesn't belong on Gymshark. And it's like, what, like, what do you actually want? You know, and that was one of my biggest gripes, but you guys know that. Because you don't decide to get healthy and then the next day wake up with a six pack. That's just not how it works. That's not? What? It's not? (laughs) Oh, well, I thought it was just me. I guess it's just me then. It's weird. With Nellie, she is very open about recovering from an eating disorder, which... Eating disorders, I have had a lot of you come and contact me on like Instagram and stuff and talk about how you're in recovery from an eating disorder. And I just think that is one of the most amazing and one of the healthiest things someone can do for themselves is to recover from something like that. If you, I and oh man, I agree with this so much. And I think this is why I get so frustrated when, um, when people, and I've said this before, but when people will equate any type of tracking, any type of, you know, uh, tracking your calories, uh, tracking your, uh, like, your your macros, anything, like, they're like, that's an eating disorder. When in reality, there are a lot of people that have, came, have come from eating disorder backgrounds that have w- worked on those through tracking and through tracking their macros and through that stuff and so that's why it's so frustrating when people just see anyone that is trying to do any sort of tracking or be on any sort sort of diet as an eating disorder i think that that's it's it's just i i really really don't like that at all you're going through something like that and so if these people were really preaching a life of health they should be celebrating nelly they shouldn't be putting her down because her body doesn't look like like she goes to the gym seven days a week 24 hours a day like that's just not that's just, <laughs> this whole thing just really bothered me and it really triggered me and it really made me realize my qualms with this whole community <laughs> well and like oh this is so good like this was something that I tried to explain um you know to the guy that I ended up like debating or whatever was like it's not just about how Nelly felt about this situation right it's not just about how what people were saying to her because the, the fact of the matter is is that there are a lot of women that see those posts and say man I look similar to Nelly or maybe I look uh, quote unquote worse than her but I'm still working on things and then they're seeing these comments from these freaking jerks that are saying really mean things and then now those comments they're internalizing them themselves that's why I had such a big problem like yes it's Nelly has a big following and she should expect some blowback right of, okay whatever But the people that are following, like, I I just think that it's wrong. And for some reason, people don't seem to to see that parallel at all. But yeah, Nelly should be celebrated, not put down. And that's that. So, sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. Why am I apologizing? (laughs) My kind of story about how I got into the health and fitness and wellness realm of social media i got into it even before i started losing weight and even before i really wanted to start losing weight i just always knew that it was something that i should do and so i followed a lot of people that did so this is something i I, i'm reading the chat and i really like this one so there's a couple comments of people saying this like tracking cat calories helped me completely stop binging and i mean completely and then uh, Anime Cat, <laughs> great name. Uh, the simple act of tracking calories, etc., is so far from an ED. And then right here, 
Um, until I got a healthy-ish relationship with food, tracking was bad for me because I got too obsessed with every single calorie and each day trying to have less than the prior day, etc. So that's what's important is like, and that's what I've said, just because something has the capacity to be bad, right? So for, for that um, person that left that comment, tracking for them didn't help. But just because it didn't help that person, that doesn't mean that it's bad for everyone, right? And this is when I found, like, Obese to Beast and Jordan Shrinks and, like, a lot oh, hey. of them. And I consider them to be, like, the good side <laughs> of this whole sphere. Um, but I also saw a lot of people that made the whole idea of weight loss and getting healthy uh, seem very unattainable and very unrealistic. Um, and that made me feel very overwhelmed. Name them! Name them! <laughs> Name them! <laughs> we need to know! Okay, sorry. And with certain people, the manner in which they conveyed their message and with such conviction, uh, it made me think that what they were saying should be taken as gospel and that their way was the only way. And that got to be very, very overwhelming. But it was balanced out with people like John and Jordan and many others so i eventually made the decision to get weight loss surgery and have lost about 115 ish ish pounds <laughs> so this is another great point um is that i i really dislike when people uh they they have lost a lot of weight and then they they basically start to claim like the way i did it is the only way right that is just that's just not how it works like everyone is super different and i think that there's a difference between sharing your journey and being like hey this worked for me versus sharing your journey and saying this is what you need to do like this is how it's done right it worked for you but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for everyone and i think there is a a stark difference there as of like six months to a year ago uh, I kind of delved back in to this whole community um, because I started stalling and I wanted to find new ways to make me unstall <laughs> and um, that's when I started uh, finding more and more people which I believe to be very not great and kind of toxic um, to just the average person. Um, because I was just being yelled at to eat grass-fed meats and vegetables and that processed foods were the devil and <laughs> should not be touched and should be avoided at all times. They were the forbidden fruit. You should not touch pro processed foods at all, regardless of their nutritional content. So having that, um, kind of preached at me at a vulnerable time when I was actually struggling with weight loss and it wasn't and weight wasn't just coming off of me like it had been, uh, made me very obsessive over everything that I put into my mouth. So I, I, oh man, like this is something that is frustrating to me when like if, if your goal is to help people that are trying to change their life through nutrition and are trying to change their life through what they're putting into their body, but then you go out and say, you know, it's not good enough to just be cutting calories. You also have to be eating grass-fed meats and has to be organic and non-gmo and all of these things when it's like okay the accessibility of those things are already hard enough so the accessibility is hard and then on top of it it is more expensive and this is why i i, I really dislike when people do this because it gives people another excuse as to why they can't lose weight and it's not true like you do not need more money to lose weight you don't like, if you, if you can afford to be the size that you are, you can afford to lose weight. Will it take some ingenuity? Will you maybe have to change a couple of the things that you're eating? Yes, but, like, you don't need to be eating these grass-fed organic meats that are, like, $20 a pound. Like you, you don't need to do that. It's not necessary, and making people think that it is is not helping. Like, are there some people that eating those types of things might help them? Yes, in their journey, of course. But for the vast majority of Americans, at least, that are struggling with being morbidly obese, like, telling them just eat, you know, grass-fed meat and that's all you should, like, I, I, it is not, that is not the way that I think you help the most amount of people. That's my thoughts. To the point where I had to, like, delete apps like my fitness pal and stuff like that because I would be within my calories for the day, 
Um, and but if I was over in my carbs or over in my like fat, even like just a little bit, I was still obsessed with that and would consider it a bad day of eating, right? Mm. And that became really unhealthy and obsessive. And I'm really happy that I caught myself um, because I think it could have developed into something really bad. Um, but it didn't. I would contribute a lot of my thinking towards that as coming from certain figures in the health and fitness community. And then, just to add fuel to the fire, right, um, I was coming at this as someone who had had weight loss surgery and someone who was successful in weight loss surgery and had kept her weight off for about a year uh, at that point. And uh, then they all just started shitting on weight loss surgery and how it's the <laughs> easy way out and how it's not right and blah 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 and that just added insult to injury and did not make me feel any better (laughs) and that's a very abbreviated version of my story with that um but I feel like it sums it up pretty well and this is a good time to kind of go into why I personally think that it's just toxic and unhealthy for just normal everyday people in general for the most part um is because this whole community and I think that one of the A lot of people will talk negatively about weight loss surgery, but I think the vast majority of people that have very strong opinions about them don't know much about weight loss surgery, right? And so that's the thing that I've noticed. And so I I know that I can say this as someone that hasn't gotten it, so it's probably a little bit different for me. But I would say if you are someone that is, one, thinking about it, or two, that has had it, and you are dealing with those people saying that stuff, um, don't put too much stock in the opinions of people that don't know what they're talking about, right? It's just their own personal opinion. Um, So I think that weight loss surgery um, is a viable solution, albeit I think it should be the last solution that you take because for a lot of the surgeries you are doing, uh, you are, you are changing your body in a way that you can't change it back. Right. So that's a a big undertaking, but it is a viable solution for some. And I think that making people feel bad because they make that decision again, isn't helpful. Sphere kind of creates a an idea of a healthy body and, a, and, a, and a, a stereotypical ideal of a healthy body and it can make you think that if you don't look like that then you're not healthy enough and you're not doing well enough just because you're not like super shredded like doesn't mean you're not healthy and doesn't mean your body's not healthy um, And honestly, I would say that, like, it is an issue for men and women, but I would argue that it is more of an issue for men because that whole ideal of a body that's, like, super shredded and super ripped and, like, no body fat and whatever is so, so prevalent and is so what is, like, the only thing out there in media. I... I I think it's really cool that she said this. It would a lot of the kids would say it's based that she said what she just said. Um, also, Megan is in here and she said I apologize that I talk so slow. It's all good. I just talk unbelievably fast, right? I've been doing this for years now. <laughs> um, but I think that um, there is a, an, a a part of truth to that where men uh, men have we haven't got the the body positive movement hasn't hit men as much as it has hit, hit women, right? Um, more uh, appreciation of more bodies isn't around for men as much as it is for women. Now, I think a part of that is because it's just the pendulum effect. Because for women, there was a lot more body policing and there was a lot more expectations placed on them. So the pendulum has swung far in the other direction where it's screw what you say, we're going to be whatever we want, right? For men, that pendulum was never as far. Right. And now I'm not saying I disagree with what you're saying, but I'm just saying for men, I think be- the reason there's not as much is because the pendulum didn't never swung as far for us as far as like you have to have the perfect body type. Like we like think about dad bods. Right. That was a huge thing. Like it was like popular to be kind of chubby. Right. And so I think that's why the pun- pendulum hasn't swung so far as far as like body positivity for men. But that is my own that is my own opinion on that. Another issue that I have <laughs> And um, kind of from personal experience is that um, if you're finding these people, you're probably finding these people because you are looking to embark on your own health and fitness journey. And so you are aware that you might not be the most physically fit, uh, the most healthy person on the planet, right? 
You already know that. You've come to terms with it. So now you're looking for help. Imagine your dismay <laughs> when you find somebody that looks like they know what they're doing because they have this like great like shredded body and this video or Instagram post is literally just screaming about how fat people are bad and leeching off of the healthcare system and uh, how you're going to die by the age of 45 like and all this stuff. You already know the health risks that you're running if you've come to terms with your weight and health. So you don't need to hear it from some gym rat that probably, most likely, has not struggled with their weight like you are. Yeah, I, I think that there is, there is a difference between disagreeing with the health at every size movement and like that's what I do right I do that all the time versus it's you you tow a thin line between disagreeing with that and then falling over the line of it just seems like this person kind of hates fat people right now I know that I have people that claim that I hate fat people but I feel like I have a lot less people that think I hate fat people versus others right and I think there is a a, a fine line that you have to tow which is fine and it's not that difficult I don't think it's that difficult where you're you you can be sympathetic to what people are dealing with and even if you disagree with them you can understand what they're going through in the the size body that they are without making fun of them and shaming them and making them feel like absolute trash and I think that's really important and I feel like it's been missed a lot and I just don't think that is a good thing to be putting out there. I don't think it works, and I don't think it helps people who do need to get healthier. I think it is super counterintuitive and stupid. Agreed. And on top of screaming at you about how fat and unhealthy you are, then they try and sell you their fitness and training programs, or a supplement they really like, which, I mean, supplements are fine, I use protein powders and stuff, but like, like fat burners, and fit teas, and shit like that, and I have tried fit tea before, okay? I've been down that road, and yes, I lost weight, but do you want to know why I lost weight? Oh gosh, here we go. Look at her face. You know what she's about to say. Because I was peeing more. And yes, I didn't eat as much food, but do you want to know why I wasn't eating as much food? Because I was drinking more water. Because that's literally what tea is. <laughs> I thought Megan I thought Megan was going to say I pooped more, but you know, whatever. It's fine. So the screaming about how unhealthy people are and just putting them down even more, like it just doesn't do anything and it doesn't work. No matter how much conviction you have behind it, it just doesn't work. Because chances are that person has heard it more, like, so many times in their life that, like, it just kind of goes in one ear and out the other. Or it just makes them feel like shit about themselves, which also does not work. So, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, the th so I will say this. Now, where I might slightly disagree with Megan, Megan said, uh, I also did poop more for the record. <laughs> I uh, assumed. Um, but I do think that there genuinely is a group of people that the tough love stuff works for them. And I think that that's fine, but I, I think that there are a um, there is a big number of people, and I would say the majority of people that hear talk like that and hear um, hear things like that, and it's it's not helpful and it doesn't help, and that's why I don't do it because I think the vast majority of people don't like being called an, a fat slob and don't like being told every day that they're gonna die when they're thirty, right? Like that stuff doesn't help, right? The way that health and wellness is presented through these people is it makes it seem very unattainable and very overwhelming and intimidating in that mm. it is portrayed by super complex meal plans and super complex meal prep, which meal prep is great. Like I meal prepped all the time, but like it wasn't nearly what some of these people show. Dude, hundred percent. Like, K-I-S-S, -S, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Like, that is, or you can you can do the, the nice version, keep it super simple, right? But, like, there is no, it doesn't need to be more complicated. Like, you guys see how I eat. Like, I'm eating, like, pre-cooked chicken, dog. Like, 
It's nothing crazy. It's nothing special. But that's the point. Like, that's why I make those videos. And I know that I get flamed by people being like, oh, you shouldn't eat that. Or you should try this. Or you should do this instead. When Like, I made a video of a full day of eating microwave food. Because I wanted to show people that, one, it's what your boy does right now. And, two, it's possible to make progress while eating like that. Right? Is it 100% the most optimal way to eat? No. Probably not. But... I, I can still make progress and I can still keep my weight off eating that way. And I want people to see that because I think it's incredibly important. And maneuvers in the gym that nobody really can do or probably should do. Like, like normal people should not be doing that kind of shit. Like, okay, well, I think handstand walks are cool and I'm going to keep doing them. All right. You can't stop me. <laughs> it could hurt you. Seriously. They don't stress how just making small sustainable goals can be just as effective, if not more effective, and can create huge results. Like, I can't tell you the difference that I saw when I just cut out really high calorie drinks and fast food before I even had surgery. The difference that I saw in my health. A freaking men. Liquid calories, fast food, junk food. Again, liquid calories, fast food, junk food. One more time for those in the back. Liquid calories, fast food, junk food. You cut those out, and I promise you, you will see results. I promise you, you will see results. And my weight loss in that time when I cut out, just those two things made such a huge, huge difference. And, uh, Kroger chicken, cheap. It's bar, <laughs> right? And I think that's another big issue is... Megan, something fell in the back of your bed. I hope you picked it up after this, after this video was done. Is that it kind of makes it look, oh, I lost a pumpkin. Oh. Here you go. She put it back. It's okay, back. good. Um, I was worried. <laughs> I think some of, like, it, the, the meal preps and the meal plans that they come up with are made with crazy expensive ingredients and I think that's where the mindset of like losing weight is like I don't have the money to lose weight because these people perpetuate this and they say that you need all these crazy supplements and you, yep. you need all these crazy foods and everything has to be organic and grass fed and like all this stuff when I swear on everything I love I have not seen this video until this very moment Common sense. Common sense. It's free. Like, yeah, that's nice, but, like, it's not necessary to lose weight. And it's not necessary to be healthy either. Obviously, with all of this stuff I am saying, if you personally are training for a goal, let's say, like, a body competition, then sure. <laughs> a body competition? Megan. What is a body composition? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry. Some of these people would be great people to look up to and to follow, maybe. But <laughs> even still. She said, she said, I don't know, John. It was 10 p.m. <laughs> people who do compete in body competitions and are <laughs> <laughs> this is not that funny but it's so funny to me oh my god <sighs> come out and say that what they do for prep is not healthy or realistic in any way um <sighs> and they uh they say that it's only good for prep reasons and to be competition ready but the average Joe might not see that part of it and think that what they are doing is what they should also be doing, is what he should also be doing. Average Joe, hypothetical character. He thinks that what bodybuilder dude over here is doing is also what he should be doing because he missed the part about bodybuilder dude saying he only does it for prep and he only does it to be competition ready. I 100% agree, and I like that she brought that up because I think a lot of people, when they do body competitions um they think that like they see people doing those and they think that that's what is the pinnacle of health 
when in reality most people that are that are competing are not in a healthy place right they're too lean and they'll like if you're actually friends with those people and have conversations they'll be like yo i feel like death right now right and i think that it's very important to talk about that like do i want to demonize body competitions uh no but i think that we should be honest about how much it takes like one thing that i really like about greg Doucette is that he is honest about how hard it is for him to press to prep for his body competitions right he talks about that all the time and he's very honest about that and i think that that's really important and i think that the more people are honest about that i think a lot more people will decide they don't want to do that (laughs) they're like you know what i don't think i need to do a body competition and so i think that I, th- I I'm really glad that this is getting more out there. I think this whole community as a whole obviously is not bad because it's promoting health and wellness. I just think the way a lot of people go about promoting health and wellness is not realistic and it's not attainable and it is uh, very overwhelming for the average person. And that's why I think channels like Obese to Beast and Jordan Shrinks, like I mentioned before, are so, so important because they teach you how to keep it real and how to keep it realistic and how to just keep the weight off and not have to buy crazy foods to do it. Honestly, fun fact about me now, uh, I'm going to see a nutritionist because I had such a flawed relationship with food before I lost weight and now I just need some guidance and I don't find that guidance in the health and fitness community anymore, uh, Hmm. nor did I ever really. That's so sad to hear. Like, and I, I, I fully believe that what she's saying is true. Also, Megan, if you're still here after I was roasting you, um, how, how did your meeting go? How did your first, did you do your first meeting yet? I'm actually curious. Uh, but I, I think that that's really sad to hear that the, the one place where Megan was looking for, um, where she was looking for guidance, she, she couldn't get it and she couldn't find it and she couldn't find like legitimate, uh, guidance for help in the, the one place that there sh- it should be, Right. Um, she said, yes, it was good. That's awesome. And I, I hope everyone knows I am just joking. Like me and Megan are friends. I'm not like, it was a joke. (laughs) Okay. Let's keep going. Because it stresses me out. Right. And it makes it super overwhelming and I just don't like it when, and I hate to bring this up so often, but it was just a really big moment and it was really cool to have his opinion on stuff. Uh, when obese to beast reacted to my video on his stream. (laughs) Hey, we're back. <laughs> um, one of the things he said was don't let perfection get in the way of good enough. And that like really struck a chord with me. Okay, well, full honesty, I think it's important. I did not make up that quote, okay? I think I heard it from a Casey Neistat vlog where he heard it from someone else. So I didn't make that up. I just want to make sure no one thinks I'm that smart, okay? It's just the saying that I like a lot. <laughs> and it's not my own. Um because I think we all should kind of think like that. Because so long as we are in a caloric deficit and we are moving more, that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. Like you're going yep. you're going to have success. And just as long as you are making the changes that you want to make and it's healthy and sustainable, it's valid. You don't need to do any of this crazy shit that the health and fitness community preaches. And you don't need to listen to the screaming shirtless man telling you how fat and unhealthy you are because you're not (laughs) ripped to the gills, right? And I think that's the term. I don't fucking know. You just don't need to because, (laughs) like, how I... Ripped to the gills. You'll love to hear it, Megan. Ripped to the gills. You know those fish out there in the body competitions. Ripped to the gills. Whatever you choose to get healthier (laughs) is good and it's valid. And as long as it's healthy and not hurting you. And that's all I really have to say. Um, I think we all just need to learn to be kinder to each other. And I think we can also all agree that social media just kind of sucks in general when it comes to, like, health and body stuff. And, yeah. So that's all I really had to say. Um, If you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. Join the fam. It's getting real fun over here. 
And this is Polly. She made an appearance in my other video. So here she is. Again. Hi, Polly. So cute. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. She hates me. Um. Yeah. That's <laughs> so subscribe for more Polly. Uh, if you liked this video, be sure to like it. Um, and all my socials will be linked down below if you want to come find me and talk to me. Um. But yeah, that's all I gotta say today. And I will see you in the next one. Okay. Bye. Oh man, that was that was a really really good video, and I think it's really important. Um, like she said a lot of things that I think I've been thinking in my head, but I just haven't said out loud. Um, there's a lot of times when you like have, have things that you feel like are, are your core beliefs that maybe you don't, um, say them out loud, right? You don't make it very obvious because it's like, you feel like through the content that you've made, uh, you hope that it comes off that way. Right. But, uh, I think instead of just hoping people get it, it's good to just say it out loud and, and be like, this is what I think. This is what I believe, right? And so I'm, I'm really, really happy that Megan made this video. Um, I hope that you guys go subscribe to her. Obviously, all the links will be down in the description. Um, and then, you know, we can blow our channel, channel up even more, get her to 100,000 subscribers, get her a nice little plaque, and then it will be good to go. She'll be able to be a YouTuber for the rest of her life. Um, but thanks, Megan, for making this video. Obey the warning signs, and when there are flashing lights or wigwags, don't attempt to cross until they come to a complete stop.